Hello and welcome to my Harlequin underskirt tutorial. The first fabric I'm using for this skirt is a white polycotton. I chose this fabric because it's nice and light for underneath the other fabric which is actually transparent. I also felt it would fray nicely at the bottom to match the reference photos. So first of all I fold it in half and I use pins to stop it from moving about. The reason I folded it is because we're making a half circle skirt. It's a lot easier to mark it out and cut it this way. So before you create the half circle you do need to take some measurements. The measurement I would suggest getting is your hip measurement. The underskirt is actually going to sit in my waist but the reason I take the hip measurement is because I need it to stretch over my hips to get it on. So my aim in this corner is to create a quarter circle that when unfolded will create a half circle. In order to draw this I need to work out the radius. If my skirt was a full circle skirt we'd refer to the circumference equals 2 pi r equation. But we don't need half of the circle as this is a half circle skirt. So what we can do is just remove that 2 out of the equation. So now we have circumference equals pi r. If we rearrange the equation to get the radius, we get radius equals circumference over pi. My hips are 41 inches, so 41 divided by pi. And my radius works out as 13 inches. So you're probably looking at this and thinking, wow, that doesn't look very big. And correct, because what happened? <laughs> I muddled up my centimetres and my inches. So yep. That's why it ended up so small. I was so involved in the process of what I was doing, I didn't even clock on to the fact it was too small. So you'll see I'll cut this out and then I'll re-measure it anyway. So yeah, make sure you don't muddle up your centimetres and your inches. I'm using some blue dressmaking chalk to draw on the quarter circle. This is totally fine as it's easily removable. Using the radius I've just worked out, I measure from the corner and mark reference points, which I then join up into the quarter circle. Next, I'm drawing a bigger quarter circle this marks the very bottom of the underskirt. To work out the length for this underskirt, I put my harlequin dress on the mannequin. I measured from the waist down and added quite a bit extra that I could play about with. And obviously that was a good thing because I drew my first quarter circle incorrectly. What I then do is add the radius length onto the length of the skirt I've just worked out. And then I measured that from the corner of the fabric. And I mark in lots of little reference points and then join them up again. We can now go ahead and cut our quarter circles out with fabric scissors. Obviously keeping in mind I do change the top quarter circle. Due to my error. When cutting it's a good idea to put a couple of pins into the middle of the fabric to stop it moving about. As obviously there's two layers of fabric here. Don't worry about cutting perfectly as we're going to be making this quite raggedy later. Here is the second and last fabric I'm using for the underskirt. It's called voile which is a French word for veil. It's transparent, lightweight, but it still has a crisp feel. I felt that using this with the polycotton would give me the right look I'm going for. Cutting the voile is easier as we now have a template. I lie the polycotton on top of the voile. I pin the two fabrics together with ball headed pins and I also use sewing clips to hold the edges. This will stop either fabric moving about when I'm trying to cut. I use fabric scissors and carefully cut the voile to match the polycotton. I also cut off the raw edges so it's going to be cleaner at the seam. I had originally considered sewing this underskirt into the dress, however I think I made the right decision to do it separate. Doing it this way was a lot neater and it was still light enough to wear underneath. Once I unfolded my fabric, I realised the mistake that I had made. So then I took the measures I needed to correct this. So you won't need to do this next step as I'm sure you've got it right first time. You can see the difference with the new measurement. I drape the underskirt around me to make sure the sizing is okay and I'm pretty happy with that and can move on to sewing the underskirt. To hold the two pieces of fabric together, I use pins and sewing clips. The part I'm going to sew first is the side seam. I'm sewing this first because at the top there's going to be elastic, so it makes sense to do this first as it'll be underneath that. Keeping in mind that the voile has these kind of rough edges, I'm pinning in just a little bit further than normal. As always, make sure the ball-headed part of the pin is closer to you when you're sewing so you can easily remove them. 
What I also recommend is putting a pin or two just in the middle of the fabric there and it just stops any of the fabric sort of moving about. I take the fabric to my sewing machine and I backstitch. Then I run the fabric through the machine using my left hand to guide it. The stitch I'm doing here is a straight stitch and I'm keeping them quite long as the voile is quite delicate. Voile is not the easiest thing to sew but because I've got this other fabric on the top it just makes it that little bit easier. When you get to the end back stitch, this will secure your stitching so it doesn't come out. After I've done one row of stitching, I go back and do a second row. I do the second row of stitching inside the seam and I make it a zigzag stitch. Zigzag stitches are really helpful to stop fraying, so that's why I've done this. Now that we've sewed the side seam, it's time to work on the waist. I've obviously got my pins in holding the two bits of fabric together. If you find it easier to gather this fabric open-ended, then you can always do this step before the side seam. Before you start gathering, pull your threads away from the machine. This gives you something to hold on to when you're ruching the fabric later. This is a temporary stitch, so you don't want to do a back stitch. You want to be able to comfortably move this fabric along the threads. Again, I use a slightly bigger seam allowance. This is because the voile is quite delicate and could potentially free. I continue around the top of the skirt until I almost reach the starting point. You do not want to cross the sewing of where you started, as you want to be able to comfortably pull both threads to create the gathers. To gather the top of the underskirt, I first double check my measurement. It's still roughly about my hip measurement, which is 41 inches. My waist is 28 inches, so I want to gather this enough to get the waist to that length. And since I'm measuring half of it, you can see it would be 14 inches on this side. To gather the fabric, hold the ends of the threads. Then with your other hand, move the fabric along the thread. The fabric starts to gather and the overall length becomes shorter. Once you're happy with your gathering, check your measurement. This worked out to be a little bit too small, so then I relax the gathers to make the top of my skirt a little bit bigger. Now I'm happy with the waist measurement, so I'm going to add elastic onto the top. I'm keeping the elastic visible as you won't see it underneath the dress. It means I can take it on and off without any sort of zips or fastenings, and it will keep it sitting securely around my waist. So how long would we make the elastic? What to do is put it around your waist and hold it taut. There's obviously going to be an overlap, so take that into account. I made my overlap about 3 inches. This way, when I sew it together, it should be pretty secure. I put my overlap right at the back of where the skirt would be. When pinning the fabric to the skirt, I sort of pinned it in the middle of the elastic, so not right at the bottom or right at the top. This way it should stay neatly hidden. Once I was happy with the placement of the pins, I took the underskirt to the sewing machine. This part obviously needs to stretch, so we use a zigzag stitch. The first thing I do is sew the very back part where they overlap. I first of all sew in a rectangular shape around the actual overlap. Then I do a sort of X shape in the middle, like a cross. This ensures the overlap is secure in the middle. A good tip when you need to change direction of where you're sewing is to pull the pressure lever foot up with the needle down in the fabric. This creates a pivot and you can move it around the needle. This only works if the needle is down into the fabric. You can then put your pressure foot lever back down and continue sewing. Once we've sewed the rectangle, this is what it looked like. You can actually sew the rectangle in the X in one go, there's a way to do it, but this I just did it separately. So I create a back stitch and sew one length of the X. 
and backstitch again and repeat on the other side. And when it's complete it looks like this. Next I sew the full length of elastic to my underskirt. I backstitch first and I use a zigzag stitch. The zigzag stitches I use are long and wide. This allows for extra stretch. And it doesn't matter what the stitches look like because we cannot see them under the dress. I do two lines of these stitches and then afterwards you can remove the gathered stitching that we had before, the temporary stitch. Once the underskirt was made, this is what it looked like. And if I lower myself to waist level, you can see it's just long enough to stick out below the skirt of the dress. This gives us a lot of room to be able to shape it. I put my underskirt onto the mannequin underneath the dress. I'd be sure to check that the elastic is sitting snugly on the waist. This is important as you are cutting the fabric to match the dress. I then cut it about 3 or 4 inches below the skirt and follow the isometric sort of sweep of the skirt. When cutting, please be careful not to cut the dress. Once I'm happy with the front, I turn the mannequin around and then repeat the process again. These are just very rough shapes, we will be doing more work to these soon. So make sure you have enough fabric to work with. The main aim now is to free this fabric at the bottom to match the look in the film. The first thing I try to do is use my fingers. This is successful for very subtle freeing and it doesn't take too long either. I do this around the whole dress. Next I find something sharp enough that I can kind of pull through the fabric to free it even more. I grab a fork. I don't want anything too sharp because I don't want to hurt myself and I feel like a fork would be quite good at ripping this. I put the fork through parts of the fabric and then I just pull it. When I'm doing this process I start to see that it's a bit easier just using one of the prongs on the fork. This way I can get right into the fabric and pull it to create tears at the end. I'm really liking the look of this and so continue around the whole of the underskirt. Just also to say this is another scenario where it's probably a good idea to step back and look at your work every so often. You can really get involved in what you're doing and then forget to check it and look back and see if it looks okay. Something else I did with the fork was just run it up and down the length of the underskirt. It created some nice runs in the fabric. They were subtle but looked good. Another good way to fray the ends is to take the fabric scissors and just run them along the length of it. I wanted some parts of my skirt to be a bit longer. I think this looks more realistic. So that's what I'm doing with this piece of fabric right here. You can see I do a combination of the scissors and the fork. It's often good to change up the technique that you're using. It can make it look more dynamic and realistic. To weather the underskirt, I use the same process as the dress. I take black acrylic paint, mix it with water and apply to the ends. I take my paintbrush and apply the mix and then use some kitchen roll to dab it off. This leaves a residue and gives the look I want. I continue this process around the skirt, being sure to apply it to both the fabrics. You don't want to weather the outside layer to find out the other one is really crisp looking and white. I make sure to weather underneath the fabric also. And there you have it, the underskirt is complete.